Right, hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. So this is a bit of an, an impromptu video, I wasn't actually planning on, on making this video, but after spending about a month with the game, and that is Forza Motorsport, I um, felt compelled to just make a quick a quick video, I've called it a review, but it's more of just a kind of first impressions, thoughts on the game, and what I like and what I don't like. Um, so there are a fair few issues with the game so far, which I will get into in a bit. But first of all, let, let's start with the pros. So, as I say, I've been playing, well, trying to play this game for about a month now. I would have put a lot more time into it um, if there weren't various issues with the game. But, but let's start with the pros. First of all, um, as I'm sure most people will agree, it does look stunning. Especially, I mean, the footage here is just going to be in 1080p. Um, but on my 4K um, TV with ray tracing on, it, it does look incredible. It's, it's definitely a next-gen game. I've got no complaints with the visuals at all, apart from if, if there's some kind of glitches or bugs going on, graphical glitches. The actual visuals as they should look when you're playing look amazing. It's very smooth, the frame rate's stable, really good looking game. The, the physics, as always with Forza games, to me feel amazing. Having a really good, a really fun time driving the cars, some good wheel to wheel action. Um, and yeah, this, it, as it always is with Forza. I've got no complaints whatsoever with the actual physics of the driving. I think it drives really well. It's a really good, like, actual racing game when you're when you're on the track, uh, and yeah, it's in it's incredible fun to drive when it's all working. Um, and then along that lines, the, the the sound design is really good as well. The the, the I, I don't know how much of that is just carried over from the previous Forza, but the 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 car engines all sound really good. You get really good on like background sounds from when you're passing other cars, hearing their engines next to yours. Especially if you're in, in cockpit mode, you can pick up like the the grunts or the, the whirs of the cars around you as you're passing. It just sounds really good, um, and it, it does make you kind of want to choose your cars depending on the sound of the engine. Like it does for me anyway. I'd rather be driving a car with that has a better engine noise than one of the other cars. Um, so they, they've really hit the spot on that one as well. And then away from kind of like graphics and sound and things, there are a decent selection of cars, as there always are in the Forza games. I think they have reduced the um, kind of the starting lineup compared to previous Forza games, but there's still hundreds. Um, I I'm not one of I've never owned all of the cars in a Forza game, um, even when going for achievements and things where you've got to own all of the ones from a certain manufacturer and stuff in the past. I've still never owned more than half the cars in the game, so a few hundred is completely fine for me. I don't understand the complaints about there used to be 500, now there's only 400. I, I don't think that's the exact numbers, but that kind of thing. Like, it's hundreds, that's that's enough cars, really. Um, and they're going to be adding them over time um, quite consistently as well. Um, and they, one thing I really do like, actually, is there's they've put a far more reasonable price on the cars. So in-game in currency, not real money, though you can buy some of real money. Um, so yeah, in the past, some of the rare Ferraris and, and kind of super real kind of LPM cars and the real really um, kind of rare good cars were kind of millions of credits, in-game credits. And now the most is kind of a few hundred thousand and it's quite easy to earn credits. You earn kind of 30 to 50,000 credits per race. So it's far easier and more affordable to get cars, which I really like. I don't, I don't think it needs to be a massive grind just to get your hand on one car, but that's good. And, and just generally, honestly, when I'm in a race with a car that's leveled up with good handling, it's amazing. They've, they've nailed the driving element of the game. But there are quite a few negatives, which I will get onto now. I'm going to go into a little bit of a rant mode. As I say, this, this video is just kind of off the cuff. I haven't written a script or anything. I'm just kind of rambling, ranting at this stage now. So the biggest con for me. So the game has been out for a month, maybe even a bit more than a month. I can't play the single player mode. I tried yesterday, so this is quite recent. I tried yesterday and it crashed on me again. Ironically, I recorded an hour of gameplay footage a, a, a few days ago and I couldn't get it to crash. So that's just sod's law, isn't it? But seriously, literally every other time I played the game, um, I have had it crash in single player. So what happens is I will do a single player race, the race will work just fine, and then I'll finish the race it will look like it saved my progress and I'll go in, sometimes I go in to do upgrades, sometimes I don't, sometimes I just continue to the next race and it will just go into an infinite loading screen um, and I have to dashboard 
I've, I've tried leaving it for kind of five, ten plus minutes just to see if it will ever come out of it. It never does. Have the dashboard, reload the game, and it has erased the progress of that previous race that I've done. So it just hasn't saved the progress at all. So I end up having to redo that race. And it's doing it to such an extent, it's just, it's so frustrating. Because you can have a, because I have it on quite a high difficulty. I don't want to just be able to be lapping everyone straight away. I, I have it, the, the difficulty, I try and tune the difficulty that it's, I'm not winning every race. I'm battling for podiums and trying to do it. So it can be, when I'm trying to win a championship, that there's a few points in it. And I've just got, I've just clutched a win or clutched a podium that I needed to kind of keep my championship hopes alive. And then it's just reset my progress and I've got to do it all over again and it's so frustrating. And the other point on this is that's not the end of the world. I mean, it is the end of the world, it's bad, but it's not the worst for the Builders' Cup because you can just wait for, hopefully, for them to fix these issues. But for the, there's, um, I've forgotten what it's called, it, but there's like um, time limited um, events in the Builders' Cup mode where if you complete all of the championships, you unlock a limited time event car. And I've been trying to make my way through these championships and it keeps resetting my progress and I can't do it and I've given up because it's too frustrating. So I'm not going to unlock that car now, which is quite annoying. So that's the main thing. It's not acceptable that it's there to start with. I think it's only happening because single player is forced to be online connection. Why? You, you, there shouldn't be a case on release of a game with six years of development that it is constantly crashing after a race and not saving your progress. It's, it's a joke, it's an embarrassment, it's not acceptable. And it's certainly not acceptable for it to still be that way a month to five, six weeks after the game is released. It's just, it's just a joke. The rant continues. The car upgrade system. So when I first heard about this, I thought it wasn't actually a bad idea. I thought I might quite enjoy it. So effectively what this is, is whenever you buy a new car, it has no upgrades and you can't put any upgrades on it. You have to level up your car through racing to unlock the ability to add various upgrades. Um, so in principle, this sounds kind of okay. It's adding like, like an RPG element to the game. Um, but after spending 20 or so hours with the game, I can tell you for me, it is utterly useless. Because what this ends up meaning is you never actually get to drive a decent handling car. So for a builder's cup, each, each one is about five to six races and your car won't even be fully leveled up by the end of the sixth race even doing the practice and everything um, but it will be kind of handling okay after the first kind of four races three or four races but for the first three races you've got a car that handles handles like crap unless it's a car that is kind of like a, a GT car or something that handles quite well to start with um, and the other thing is you can't put racing tires or anything so you're just using road tires to start with but the AI will all have racing tires so there's a complete imbalance there from the beginning and by the time you do get to level up your car by the kind of fourth, fifth, sixth race of the series you then start a new builder's cup like the next championship in the story mode and you have to use a different car so you're never using leveled up cars it's just i don't understand it it's it's a terrible idea i can see what they were going for in trying to form a connection with the car so my suggestion would be to Keep the levelling up system for a car, so you're levelling up your car 1 to 50, but but have all car unlocks um, available from the start, and instead have cosmetics locked. So at the start, let's say you can only have the base manufacturer colours, at level 10, uh, these are just hypothetical, but just at level 10 you unlock metallic paint and matte paint, at level 20 you unlock one layer of liveries, at level 30 you unlock multiple layer of liveries so you can do your own full designs. And maybe at level 50, there's like what, liveries designed by the developers or by some specialists, by kind of community livery designers that are well known in the community that, that could work with um, Turn 10 to actually develop these. And there's liveries that you can only unlock when your car is level 50. So you can kind of wear these, put these liveries on your car, race around the track, and people will know what those liveries are. It means you've leveled up your car to level 50 and it's kind of a badge of honor. You can show a bit of pride that you've leveled up your car that far. But all of your upgrades and things for actually handling the car just should be, how you should be able to do whatever you want from the start, in my opinion. Um, just because I end up never racing a leveled up car. So one of my other big peeves, which is, to be honest, has kind of always been the case with, um, well, all racing games, 
um, but I thought they would have improved it in this one. So I'm gonna, I've got video playing about, but I'm gonna commentate on a specific video clip in a second. But it's the AI driving. Um, so the AI driving, once everything's up and running, is fairly decent and can give me a bit of a challenge. I do struggle, to, like I say, I, I set the difficulty to, I'll tweak it as I'm going along as I upgrade my car to keep it at a reasonable difficulty. So I've been jumping between level six and level seven of AI difficulty, and it goes from one to eight, eight the hardest. So reasonable difficulty, not the hardest, but reasonable difficulty. So you'd expect a certain level of kind of driving ability. Um, but I have to always make myself start near the back, otherwise I'll just be in first place by the first corner. I'm gonna show you why. Okay, so this is the start of the race. This is in the Mazda. I'm in a, a, an unleveled up Mazda. So it's just a stock car. So I haven't got an advantage or anything in terms of acceleration here. This is complete stock. And look at this. They're all just in the line. None of them are making any movement to get, they're all braking on the, the opening straight. They're not moving around at all. I'm just driving straight up the middle, going from basically at the back of the pack to near the front of the pack before I'm even at the first corner. And they will continue this for the whole of the first lap uh, around the whole track. They all just go in the line. They won't try and overtake each other. They'll, they'll just break in the middle of straights and things. And it just makes the, the first lap of any race just completely pointless. It's, and I just don't understand why the AI is so bad. Here, I've, got, I've left loads of space for him and he's just whacked me off the road. The AI just needs work. I, I expected there to be some kind of improvement from, from six years of development in the, AI, in the AI, but it's not any better than it was. And, and from memory, I think it's actually worse. Moving on, the online. So I've, I've had a lot of fun in, in online multiplayer, I have to say. I haven't had any experience with like lag or glitches or anything in that. The racing itself has been absolutely, like the performance, has, connection and everything has been absolutely fine for me. I have seen online some other people having issues, but that's been fine. That's not a problem for me. What is a problem is I'm quite a safe driver. I won't ram people. I try and keep my safety rating high. So I've got an S safety rating and I've got a relatively high um, skill rating as well. So I would expect to be in lobbies with an S safety rating where it's not full of rammers. But every single race I've been in, there have been multiple just outright rammers. If you overtake someone without even touching them, the next corner, they'll just they'll, they'll ride right into the, the back of you, push you off the road, or they'll ride up the inside with too fast and just whack into the side of you and knock you off the track. And it happens in every single race. I don't understand why this is happening unless they have been not crashing at all for the last few races, got an S rating and then suddenly in this race have decided to do it, but I don't think so. I think it's just that the S rating is far too lenient or there's not enough S rated people and they're putting you with lower safety people. Um, but whatever the case, they need to sort this as well because it's ruining races. Um, the amount of time of having a really good race, it's like an eight lap race and there's five or six laps of really good racing. Um, and then it's just all ruined by one knob head just ramming you off the track for no reason uh, and your race is over and it, it's just completely ruined the experience so they need to sort this as well the career mode um itself up when it does actually decide to save is is lackluster um again this game was in development for six years and i know it's a live you can tell it's a live service game because i think what they've done is develop loads of content and then be like, well, it's a live service game, so let's hold 75% of it back, and we're going to drip fleet that out over the next couple of years. Because there's hardly anything in the Builder's Cup. This is just, there's four or five cups in, in each of the four tiers, and you just work your way through them. Just bog standard, nothing original, nothing creative, nothing new over any of the previous fours of motorsports. In fact, it's a lot, it's a lot less than all of the previous motorsports. Um, and it's just, it's just disappointing. It's still a full price game. I mean, yes, most people are playing it through but Game Pass, but if you didn't, it is, they're selling it as a full price game and it doesn't have the features or the content of a full price game. It has the, the, the features of kind of a 30 quid game and the rest is coming with live service. So that's a bit, there's the rant, but coming back to the start, when I'm in a race, the racing as ever for Forza feels really good. And I have no doubt this is one of those games that's gonna be on one of those lists of games that was crap on release and then a few years later is amazing like No Man's Sky like Battlefield 2042 and unfortunately these days for any game that isn't kind of a 100% story game one package at release any game that has any element of live service I think this is the reality we're in now 
Um, and I was really, Forza Motorsport is one of my favorite kind of game series of all time. I was really looking forward to this game and all of the problems I've had with it, it's just been a big disappointment so far. I'm gonna carry on playing it. I'm waiting for bugs fixes to come out. Once they fix the, the crashing um, bug in the story mode, I will play through all of Career, and I'm sure I'll have a great time. But there's just too many issues with it right now that are not acceptable for a game that's been in development for six years. It's a huge Xbox first party title, title that lots of people have been looking forward to. Everyone's comparing it to Gran Turismo and it's it's just not acceptable it's not it's not good enough so no yeah. end of rant <laughs> uh, thank you all for listening i hope you all have a great day and let me know your thoughts your experience with forza motorsport if you've been playing forza if you've been have you had the same issues that i've been having do you agree with me do you like the upgrade system um, i'd be interested to see if, pe- if some people do like that and uh, yeah what are your thoughts what are your thoughts on the game okay thanks for listening and uh on to the next one